Hi, my name is Adam Driscoll, and I'm going to show you how to get started with PowerShell Universal Dashboard today. So the first thing we want to do is actually install PowerShell Universal Dashboard, and we can do that through uh, the PowerShell Gallery. Um, in this case, I'm going to install it into my current user scope. I'll put force. So I don't have to acknowledge anything. Uh, PowerShell Universal Universal Dashboard allows you to create dashboards with only PowerShell script. It's built on modern technology. Uh, it runs on ASP.NET Core, um, and React.js is the uh, front end client that you actually see in your web browser. Um, it's actually capable of running on uh, anywhere that PowerShell Core is available, as well as Windows PowerShell 3 and up. So you can run this on Linux or Mac OS X. Um, once we're installed, we'll be able to create our first dashboard with a simple script and get up and running in a browser in a matter of minutes. There's lots of examples out on uh, GitHub on how to get started and documentation up on Gitbooks on uh, how to use this module. So now that I have PowerShell Universal Dashboard installed, I'm going to open VS Code to actually create my dashboard. I've created a, a dashboard.ps1 in VS Code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new dashboard variable that actually contains our dashboard. So I'll use the new UD dashboard commandlet to do so. You'll see that new UD dashboard takes a bunch of different parameters. Um, for example, the title. Uh, this is the title of the web page as well as the title at the top of the dashboard. So we're going to call this processes. Um, you can also specify a lot of things like the color of the dashboard, uh, whether to cycle through a multi-page dashboard, um, and the content of the dashboard. So in this case, we're going to actually just create a simple dashboard using the content parameter. Then we specify a script block, and the script block allows us to define additional components that go into our dashboard. So th since this is a process dashboard, let's actually create a new chart to output the uh, process memory that is currently being used on my system. So if I use new UD chart, I can then create a new chart that um, contains that data. Um, new UD chart actually generates a chart.js um, chart uh, in our dashboard that you'll see in a second. So we will title this uh, process memory. You can also do things such as auto refresh um, different components in the dashboard so that as data updates you don't have to refresh the page. Those uh, components will update automatically. Um, in this case though we're just going to define an endpoint. An endpoint is actually a ASP.NET core endpoint that gets generated automatically when you create a script block. So you can put any PowerShell script inside this endpoint and it'll be called uh, from the client-side JavaScript back to the server into your PowerShell script. In this case, I want to do uh, get process. We're going to sort these processes by working set memory descending so that we get processes that use the most memory. From there, I want to select uh, the, f not the Azure profile. I want to select the first five processes that are using the most memory and then we're going to output them into chart data. Chart data allows us to format our uh, our data in a fashion that is uh, capable of showing on our uh, dashboard. Um, in this case we can simply select the data property. In this case we want to select, select the working set property as the y value of the chart and then the label property as the x value of the chart is the name of the process. Um, and this will format uh, that data correctly so that it uh, displays in our chart. To actually get up and running with our dashboard, what we need to do is call start UD dashboard. Uh, start UD dashboard has a couple different options. Um, first, most important one is the dashboard. So we're going to pass in our new dashboard that we just created. Um, then we can specify a port. That's the port the actual dashboard will run on. Uh, in this case, I want to run on 10,000. And then I'm going to specify the auto reload uh, property. This is great for um, when you're developing your dashboard. As you make changes to this particular script, it will actually automatically reload the dashboard. Um, and you'll be able to see that happen uh, kind of in real time so that you can make changes to your dashboard real quickly and get some good feedback as you uh, develop your dashboard. 
So let's save that and run it. And you can see it output that we have dashboard zero running on port one or 10,000 and it is currently running. So if I were to uh, bring up that dashboard, what you'll see is uh, we have a web server that's up and running locally on this machine. Um, and it's got a title of processes. Here's our component, uh, process memory, which I spelled wrong. And um, you can see that these are the top processes using memory currently in our computer right now. So uh, if you were to continue to develop your dashboard, for example, if I wanted to fix that issue that I had spelling, um, what I can do is I can just go memory and save that. And what you'll see is as I save that, the website automatically reloads to reflect the change that I made to that dashboard. So now I've corrected my spelling mistake. Uh, you can edit anything in this file aside from things like the port um, and autoload, but anything in your dashboard settings, uh, such as um, if I wanted to display more processes, I could uh, update this to 15. Uh, and now you can see I have all 15 processes um, shown here. Um, I could go back to 10, that kind of thing. So I hope this was a good intro on uh, PowerShell Universal Dashboard. There's a ton of more features that you can check out. Um, visit poshud.com to check out a running example that's up in Azure. Uh, download PowerShell um, Universal Dashboard from the PowerShell Gallery using Install Module. Um, and you can always purchase PowerShell uh, Universal Dashboard licenses from poshtools.com.